get her to bust her up, so if we had to go back to play. Yeah, right. Yeah. No, I got you. Yeah. Okay, thank you all for coming. We already opened the meeting in closed session, so if I could have you all stand and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. like to welcome everyone. Tonight we have eight special recognitions. First we will hear from Dr. Patrick Shelton who will introduce the students accepted in the Missouri Scholars Academy and the Missouri Scholars 100 recipients. In addition we will honor students entering the military, hear about the Parkway Alumni Association's Granting Dreams program, recognize the Martin Luther King Jr. essay poster contest winners, the Allstate Vocal Jazz Ensemble, and the Youth for Understanding Exchange program. Uh, I'd like to now welcome Dr. Patrick Shelton, coordinator of Customized Learning, to introduce the students selected for the Missouri Scholars Academy and the Missouri Scholars 100. Thank you. Good evening. President Todd, Vice President Sortino, members of the Board of Education, Dr. Marty Mistover, and all of our guests this evening. Eight Parkway students have been selected to participate in the Missouri Scholars Academy this year. The Academy is a three-week academic program for 330 of Missouri's gifted students who are ready to begin their junior year of high school. The Academy is a residential program held on the University of Missouri Columbia campus. 
A special selection committee appointed by the Missouri Department of Elementary and Secondary Education screens and evaluates all of the nominations. Participants are selected on the basis of the following. Student scores from selected individual intelligence and aptitude tests, grade point average, student essays, evidence of leadership, creativity, intellectual curiosity, problem solving ability, and initiative, projected benefits to the student for participating in the academy, and commitment to remain at the academy throughout the entire three week experience. I'd like to ask that the students uh, come down and be recognized by the Board of Education. From Parkway Central High, Varsha Morali. And Balaji Vijaya Kumar. From Parkway North High, Bethel DeWitt. And Alexander Schaefer. From Parkway South High, Matthew Christofferson. And Veronica Sorg. And from Parkway West High, Jonathan Ma. And Dawson Wren. Tonight, we're also recognizing the Missouri Scholars 100 participants. This is a statewide program that honors 100 of Missouri's top academic students in the graduating class of 2018. The Missouri Scholars 100 program is sponsored by the Missouri Association of Secondary School Principals, and schools across Missouri were invited to nominate candidates for the statewide recognition. Each student nominated had to first meet criteria of an academic decathlon, which included 10 events designed to assure the academic strength of the student. To meet the decathlon requirements, the student must have a minimum GPA of a 3.750, a minimum ACT score of 29 or SAT score of 1900, be ranked in the top 10% of the class, and have taken upper level courses in mathematics, science, English, and foreign language. The student must also have excellent attendance, be an exemplary school citizen, and be involved in school activity programs. We're very privileged to have four of the hundred here in Parkway. From Parkway Central High, Krishni Karunananda. And also from Central High, Anusha Manjunath. And from Parkway West High, Karen Kumar. And Rachel Wang. Congratulations once again to all participants of the Missouri Scholars and Missouri 100. Thank you. Am I on? Now I am. Thank you. Uh, could I now have Paul Tandy, Chief Communication Officer, come present the students joining the military? Well, good evening, uh, President Todd, members of the board, uh, Dr. Marty. Um, this is the time of year when we celebrate the accomplishments of our graduates and look forward to the next chapter in their lives. While many students are making plans to go to college or enter the workforce, some like those here tonight are getting ready to go to boot camp or other similar training as they embark on a career in the military. Some of them will only serve for a few years while others may serve for 20 or 30 years. We know this because we've witnessed many students join the military and you just never know where the path will lead. Some of them will find their true calling through military service while others will decide to pursue different interests. But I believe each of them will be glad they served and will grow from the experience. And I know that all of us in the room tonight are extremely proud of them and grateful for the service they're about to give to our country. 
As I call your name, please come forward to be recognized by the board. We have a few students uh, who couldn't be here tonight, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, introduce all of them in recognition for their service. Uh, so we can recognize him. First, I don't think he's here, but from Central High School, Dylan Creeth joining the Marine Corps. Is Dylan here? I didn't think so, but Dylan Creeth is joining the Marine Corps from Central High School. From, uh, yes. And he'll be shipping out to uh, San Diego. Uh, Kaziah Gavin, is Kaziah here? Okay. Kazai has accepted an appointment to the United States Air Force Academy. So he will be heading out to Colorado Springs, Colorado, enjoying the lovely weather and a little training. <laughs> Next, I think he's here, John Kim from Central High. Is John? Yes, John. <laughs> John has also accepted an appointment to one of the military academies, and he's going to the United States Military Academy at West Point, which is the Army. <laughs> so that's from Central High. From North High, we have Ezra Crisp, who's joining the Air Force. As I said, Ezra's joining the Air Force. He's gonna be shipping out to uh, Lackland Air Force Base in, in Texas. And he will be, uh, his, his job in the Air Force is gonna be geospatial intelligence. Thank you, Ezra. <laughs> and I think we have, that's from North High, from South High, I think we have Jennifer Harder. Is Jennifer here? Jennifer. <laughs> And not to be outdone, we have another, a student who's joining another one of the academies, this, in this case, the United States Naval Academy uh, in Annapolis, Maryland. <laughs> Jennifer loves to swim, so she's going to the right branch. Um, I don't think Ben is here, but I want to recognize this. Ben Hausick here with the Navy from South High? No, so Ben Hausick from South High is joining the United States Navy. <laughs> And finally, I don't know if he's here, I think he is from South High, Zach Ford. There he is. And Zach, Zach is, oh well. Zach's joining the Army. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, thank you. Okay, now I'd like to, am I on? I'm not on either. Uh, now I'd like to invite Nico Toro to join us up here. Hello. Thank you. Good evening, President Todd, board members of the school district, school, school board, and Dr. Marty and Ms. Stover. Um, thank you all for having me tonight and speak on behalf of the Parkway Alumni Association. Uh, proud to be a Parkway graduate and serving as the president of my first term in the Parkway Alumni Association. We had another great year uh, supporting the Parkway community. I'm proud to be here today, share a few updates and upcoming opportunities. Since last May, we enjoyed a very successful golf tournament at the Bear Creek Golf Lodge, and we currently, currently are planning for our next golf outing on June 15th. Uh, we are welcomed and supported 1,400 high school seniors in their transition to the alumni status by attending different graduation rehearsals and graduation ceremonies, and we are gearing up to do this again this month. We hosted our fun community events, including F Parkway Family Day at Bush Stadium, game nights at the St. Louis Blues, and a trivia night. In December, we hosted another successful community leadership breakfast with over 350 community members, parents, and Parkway staff and teachers in attendance and recognize the many different partnerships that we t take place here in our district. We continue to park partner with Parkway to promote programs such as Spark, and this year we sponsored two of their pitch competitions. In the spring, we celebrated one of Parkway's greatest traditions by recognizing the District Teachers of the Year, Albert Award winners, and our newest program, The Light of Parkway, which highlights our outstanding support staff. All of these awards were part of Parkway's Appreciation Month. Monday, April 30th, the PAA hosted the 21st Annual Granting Dreams Ceremony with over 500 dedicated educators, parents, and grandparents, and siblings in attendance. 
This year, the PAA granted 240 student grants, the most we've ever given out, allowing students to realize their dreams. I'm proud to report that including this year's class of recipients, the PAA has awarded over 3,802 grants, totaling more than $318,000 since the inception of this program. We look forward to continuing to celebrate this student-centered program for many years to come. This week, the PAA partnered with Waterway Gas and Wash to give a whole thing car wash to any teacher that had a donation made in their honor to our Educators Make a Difference Fund. The PAA and Waterway also went to Highcroft Ridge Elementary today to surprise the District Teacher of the Year, Danielle Stiltz, with a one-year car, car wash membership. The Alumni Association is looking forward to several future opportunities to connect with Parkway community, and in June, we'll be announcing another Hall of Fame class, adding two, 22 prestigious members from all over the world, bringing the program's total to 228 outstanding alumni. This event is always an extremely inspiring event, and we hope you can join us on November 10th. A special thank you to the board, the administration, and all the faculty and staff for their continued support in promoting the PAA and its many programs each year. We truly appreciate our collaborative partnership. Thank you. Next, we would like to recognize the winners of the Martin Luther King Jr. Essay and Poster Contest. If you could please welcome with me Phyllis Barnes, a reading specialist at Mason Ridge. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, Dr. Marty, and thanks for this opportunity, um, President Todd and Vice President Sortino and the rest of the members of the board. We so appreciate you always giving us this chance. This is over 10 years now that we've had the opportunity to recognize the district winners of the Martin Luther King Poster Essay Contest. Um, so um, it's hard to imagine that last month was the 50th year anniversary of Dr. King's death. And at this time in our country and even in our own district when we've experienced such challenging relationships with one another, it's really heartwarming to see the words and the pictures of children that kind of remind us of really what's important. Um, if I could just share two quick quotes from Dr. King that I think are just relevant to the students' work this evening and to where we are this evening. Um, one is, darkness cannot drive out darkness, only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate, only love can do that. And another um, is that that in the end, we will remember not the words of our enemies, but the silence of our friends. And again, it's just really heartwarming to see these kids have such great perspective on what life is all about and how we should treat one another. So the theme of this year's contest was fulfilling Dr. King's dream, looking back, looking forward, and we were fortunate to have several district recipients this year. So if I can start off with Sin Sinai Namadi from Henry School, Elementary School. Sinai, would you please come up? <laughs> I think Sinai did a great job of getting everyone started tonight. Way to go, Sinai. <laughs> Sinai is our first place winner in the kindergarten and first grade category. Next, we have Ale Shahab from Henry. <laughs> Ali is our second place winner in the kindergarten first grade category. We also have Costa Karajinas from Henry. <laughs> and Costa was our third place winner in the kindergarten and first grade category. Moving on to the second and third graders, we have Miss Sierra Singsmren from Mason Ridge. <laughs> Sierra was inspired to participate because she heard me talking about the contest at school, and she said, I think I want to do that. <laughs> and look where it ended. <laughs> Some of the second graders were too cute. They were even doing other contests. They had them on the, when we were having those long days of indoor recess. 
All right, next we have Alice Petty from Shenandoah Valley. Come on up, Alice. <laughs> This is a second place winner in the second and third grade category. And Alice shares that honor with Benet Sebastian. Come on up, Benet. winner in the second and third grade category is Drew Patenker. <laughs> Drew is also a student at Shenandoah Valley. Moving on to fourth and fifth grade, we have Zayden Reza. Shenandoah Valley is also on a roll. All the remaining, the winners in our fourth and fifth grade category were from Shenandoah Valley. <laughs> we also have Nia Carey. Come on up, Nia. <laughs> Some of you might think Nia looks a little bit familiar and Zayden as well. They've been participants in this contest before and <laughs> met some of you before. <laughs> Next, we have Kate Adam. Kate is one of our third place winners in the fourth and fifth grade category. And she shares that honor with Sarah Jones. Last but not least, we have Ronak Mahanti from Central Middle. Some of you have watched Ronak grow up because again, <laughs> this is not his first time be placing as a district uh, winner in this contest. Congratulations to all of our students and thank you so much for the opportunity. We also would really like to thank Kathy Kelly and Amy Story and the rest of the staff that helped to make all of this happen and prepare the certificates for the kids. Thank you so much. I'd like to ask, oh, uh, I'd like to ask uh, Pat McPartland, president of the PNEA, to join us to present the PNEA scholarships. Thank you, President uh, Todd, Vice President Sorrentino, board members, Dr. Uh, I was made you Dr. Sorrentino again, Dr. Marty and Ms. Dover. Um, it's my pleasure to, to be here again, yet a double doctorate for you. Uh, my pleasure to, to be here to uh, announce our scholarship winners. A couple things just to, to, to make very clear for, for everyone here. Um, part of this is our way of fulfilling our commitment to education, uh, supporting both our uh, current students who will be educators and our current educators to uh, fulfill you know possible development pieces that they'd like to have. So these are, there's a number of scholarships that I, I sadly do not have the cute kids uh, that Phil's had. Um, and in fact, our high school uh, students are not here, but I do want to read their names just so you know the, the, the scholarships that they've won, and then we'll walk through our uh, adults and we'll be finished. Um, so Parkway NEA High School Scholarships, um, Elena Furgis, South High. <laughs> Lillian McFarland, South High. Brett Shade, West High. <laughs> Tyler Sherman, North High. <laughs> and Randy Walker, also North High. 
And these scholarships actually go uh, to, so the students have to send actually to us their enrollment in the School of Education, and then we actually uh, put the money into their accounts. So it's a, it's a nice piece and kind of a, again, it's a $500 scholarship, which any of you who have students in college, every $500 counts. Uh, the last student scholarship actually is, is, is named for, uh, for a PNEA member, and this is open to a PNEA uh, members, uh, or the children of PNEA members, and that's the Gene Olson Scholarship, and that goes to Natalie Dicker uh, from Central High. The rest of our scholarships are ones that are uh, for a variety of uh, uses for our teachers. Uh, and, and again, the total of our scholarships, uh, we end up right at $7,000 between the students and those that go to, uh, to our staff members. Um, so the Vito Maniachi Professional Development Scholarship, this is a $1,000 scholarship. Um, our first uh, award winner is Kathy Pennington from Northeast Middle, who is here. Thank you. Our second uh, Vito Maniachi winner is Danielle Stiltz, who seems to be here a lot at being recognized. <laughs> seven of your 15 minutes of fame. <laughs> Um, move on to our Parkway NEA Professional Development Scholarships, and again, these are $1,000 scholarships. Um, from Shenandoah Valley, Stephanie Kishapo. Close, but not as Yes. <laughs> Our next winner is Jeff Church from North High. He is not here, he's coaching. Uh, next winner, Jenna Lucas from Northeast Middle, and uh, Jenna is home with a sick child. <laughs> Reality. Then our next winner, uh, Leah Plumley from Carmen Trails, and I'm not sure if, and Leah's here, all right. So our next uh, set of scholarships, these are the Linda Favero Memorial Scholarships for grants, and these can be either used for uh, classes or for uh, classroom materials or potentially for workshops. Uh, so our first winner is Emily Thornburg from Northeast Middle. Okay. And then our other uh, Favero winner is Brent Wildhaber from West High, who's also coaching. Because it's May. And then our last scholarship actually is a name for our former president, uh, Joanna Bozeman, and this is Joanna Bozeman Social Justice Scholarship, and it goes to Lisa Burks from West Middle. All right. I've got it here, I promise. There we go. Congratulations, so thank you. I'd like to now invite uh, Jeff Lackey, Coordinator of Fine Arts, to come forward to recognize our all-state vocal jazz ensemble students. Good evening, President Todd, Vice President Sam Scortino, members of the board, Dr. Marty, Ms. Stover, everyone present tonight. It is with great honor I acknowledge seven extremely talented, dedicated Parkway High School musicians who have achieved the honor and distinction of being selected to perform in the 2018 All-State Vocal Jazz Ensemble in Jefferson City for the Missouri Choral Directors Association this coming July. The All-State Choir is an audition group of 16 students um, of the best singers across the state. The student applicants can range from anyone from junior in high school all the way to seniors in, um, in college. The 16 of, of the 16 available spots, six of them were taken by Parkway students, one even as an alternate. And so that comprises about one third of the choir is gonna be par represented by Parkway, which is something to be very proud of. I wanted, sorry. <clears throat> I'd like to take a quick moment to thank their music teachers for their guidance and nurturing through this process and their parents for all that you do to support. I'd now like to introduce those that are here tonight to come up to be recognized by the Board of Education and Dr. Marnie. 
June Bain from West High, who I do not believe was able to attend. Skyla Faber from West High. Katia Frederick was an alternate from West High. Danny Fuller was a soprano from West High. He was able to come tonight. Dominic Doré, tenor from Central High. Also, I believe here tonight is Jaden Taylor, bass from Central High. And Mason Todd, bass from West High. He's working. So again, congratulations to all of our this year's 2018 All-State Jazz Choir. I'm now pleased to welcome Stephen Rutherford, parent volunteer for Youth for Understanding Student Exchange Program. Good evening. With me this evening are four YFU students who will soon complete their year at Parkway and return to their home countries. Two of them received full scholarships from YFU to come to the United States. And there is a fifth YFU Parkway student named Hayden Sampson, who is a local student from West, who received a full scholarship from YFU to spend her entire junior year studying abroad in Germany. And she'll return to St. Louis in July. I grew up in the Parkway School District and 33 years ago, I was a YFU high school student to Japan. The experience changed my life, and I still keep in touch with my Japanese family. 13 years ago, my wife and I had four young children aged five, three, one and a half, and six months when we decided to host our first YFU student at Parkway. Today, our children are at Central High and Central Middle, and so far, we have welcomed young people from 13 countries into our home. And even though they may live with us for just a year, they remain members of our family forever. Tonight, I'd like to thank Parkway and YFU for giving our family this wonderful opportunity to give our children sons and my wife and me brothers, or sorry, give our children brothers and my wife and me sons from all over the world. Unfortunately, there are not enough host families for the number of kids who want to be exchange students, so my hope is that tonight everyone in this room will go home and seriously consider welcoming a young person from another culture into their family. And together we can do our part to help foster peace through understanding in our Parkway community. Thank you. I'm Elias, and I'm from Finland. I was always interested in American schools, and Parkway Central hasn't disappointed me. There are a lot of things that stand out for me in Parkway Central. The fact that the students in the school are so diverse. I've learned so much from different people regarding their cultures. Another difference is the teachers. A lot of the teachers aren't there for just because it's their jobs. They're, they're there because they actually care about what they're teaching, and they want their students to learn. Also, I like having teachers who talk to me as a person, not as a student. They're interested in where I'm from and who I am. I've also had classes that I actually really enjoy going to, and that are interesting, like Mr. Poole's Contemporary Issues class. One special thing about Parkway Central is sports. We have many good sports teams, and uh, different sports and uh, going to support our school's teams has been a lot of fun. My highlight from this year has definitely been the soccer season. Our team managed to win the state championship and I felt like the whole school was behind us during those last few big games. A big uh, thank you goes to you, the school board, and Central's principal, Dr. McCarthy.
evening. I'm Moritz and I'm from Germany. I would like to thank Parkway West Principal Dr. Mitchell and the Parkway Board for giving me the great opportunity to attend Parkway West High this year. I made great memories and will always be more than happy to come back. I was part of West's soccer program and would also like to thank Coach Herpel for all the support and all the advice he gave me. He truly was one of the most important persons in school for me and I really appreciate all the work and effort he puts into the program. Joining the soccer team was definitely one of the best decisions I've made during my exchange year. I made so, ma so many good friends on the team and I still have very strong friendships with most of the, my former teammates. Once again, I am very thankful for this unique and great opportunity the Parkway Board gave me. Thank you. My name is Nando Zotke, I am 16 years old and I am an exchange student from Germany. Um, this exchange year has been an incre incredible opportunity for me and it has been, um, uh, the Parkway School District has made it possible through the decision to allow um, exchange students into the district. Um, I have been feeling welcome here since before school started with um, soccer practice and it also has been incredibly helpful since the first day of school because I would have been incredibly lost without the friends I had already made during soccer practice. I have found a second family here and also many great friends outside of my soccer team. One of them is even going to visit me next summer in Germany. Um, I have had many supportive teachers that actually help me and understand me um, through my problems here. But um, one of them that was really standing out is Coach Frankenfield. He is the varsity um, volleyball coach and I had a PE class with him first semester. I would also like to thank um, our school's principal, Dr. Kane, and again, you, the Parkway School District and the school board to give me this incredible opportunity. Hello, I'm Nils and I'm from Germany as well. I would like to say thank you to the school board, to the Parkway community and to Dr. McCarthy for allowing us exchange students attending at Parkway Central. I felt very welcoming at any time and really enjoyed going to the school. My favorite class, I guess, was Mr. Schaefer's math class because he really did a great job enjoying, uh, explaining his stuff to our students. I, I've also taken um, senior English in both semesters and that was pretty difficult because I wasn't really good in English at the beginning, but Mr. Stout and Ms. Haley both did a great job yeah, helping me and uh, supporting me through the year. Parkway Central is a very diverse school and I think that is really good. I've had many great memories and yeah, I will never forget Parkway Central High School. Thank you very much for allowing us foreign exchange students participate in your daily school life and I hope this program will go on in the next years and so other teenagers from Germany can or Europe can yeah, experience that. Thank you. Thank you to all of our outstanding students, their families, teachers, and principals, all of you played a role in their past year for joining us tonight. Uh, for, we're honored to have you with us tonight and every night. At this time, we'll take a quick break. We'll resume the board meeting shortly. Thank you.
get the superintendent to sit down. <laughs> we'll carry on. Okay, uh, 6.0 additions, corrections, modifications to the agenda. Uh, 6.01 addendums and corrections to agenda item 10.10, .10, approval of personnel items. 6.02, addition of agenda item 10.59, approval of 2018 design challenge conference costs. 6.03, addition of agenda item 10.60, Approval of purchase of advanced placement exam services. 6.04, addition of sole source letter to agenda item 10.54, approval of renewal of Turnitin. Next, citizen statements uh, per the citizen sign-up sheet. I will ask, we only have one tonight, so I will ask Shauna Barton to come forward, and Shauna, you will have three minutes. Good evening, board. My name is Shauna Barton, 1042 Treetop Trail Drive, 63021. I'm standing here tonight to talk to you about another topic I am passionate about, dyslexia and reading literacy for all students. Dyslexia is the most common learning disability out there. It affects up to one in five children, not just in Parkway, but everywhere. It is also one of the most researched learning disabilities out there. People have been researching dyslexia for over 100 years. The National Institute of Health has determined that 95% of all dyslexic children can be identified by age five and a half, the age of our average kindergartner. Using an appropriate literacy program in kindergarten and first grade can teach all of our children to read, not just dyslexic children, but all children. They will be able to stay at grade level, they will need minimal interventions, and they will need minimal accommodations. Dyslexia cannot be cured, but all dyslexics can be taught to read. But failing to use an appropriate literacy program in kindergarten and first grade is devastating for those dyslexic children, both emotionally and educationally. Next school year, you probably know there is a mandated screening that has been put out for Missouri. So all kindergarten through third graders are going to be screened. We could potentially have one in five of our Parkway children identified as dyslexic. We have not trained our teachers for this. I urge all of you to educate yourself on dyslexia and the evidence-based reading and spelling programs that are available. We owe it to our teachers and our students. I will leave with one last statistic. Every year we test our third graders for their literacy, and there's always going to be a portion of them that fail. And that statistic, the number of our third graders, the number of our eight-year-olds who fail, that number is used to determine how many prison beds we get in 10 years. That literacy rate is the actual budget projection for prison beds. So I will leave you with that. I would like you all to consider what we are going to do for our dyslexics in Parkway. Thank you. Thank you, Shauna. After, uh, after we get a few uh, days to do a little research, we will respond to you in writing. Okay. Uh, next, 8.0, approval of agenda. May 9th, 2018, may I have a motion and a second to approve the agenda for the regular meeting of the Board of Education scheduled for, scheduled for May 9th, 2018? All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries 6-0. Uh, next, uh, may I please have Dr. Pacini join us and uh, have her introduce some new administrators. Thank you. Good evening, President Todd, Vice President Shortino, Dr. Marty, Ms. Stover, and members of the board. I am very excited and happy to introduce uh, Michael Barilek as our new Director of Social Emotional Support Services. Michael, will you come up here, please? So we, you might be wondering, what is this? new position. This is a new position. It's newly created. Um, it's a position that's within the Student Services Department and is designed to work directly with schools in addressing the social, emotional, and behavioral needs of students. Specifically, but not limited to, overseeing, uh, what Michael will be doing is overseeing the work of the uh, Coordinator of Student Discipline and Alternative Discipline Services and Programs. Um, 
she will be overseeing a team of social and emotional behavioral support specialists that will also work directly with schools. And he will also be um, coordinating and designing professional development for teachers and staff at the building level. So we're really excited about this new opportunity for Parkway and for Michael leading the charge. So I'm gonna tell you a little bit about Michael. Most people already know Michael, much better than me. But I, today I learned that Mike, but Michael has 20 years of service in Parkway. So he already has quite a bit of service in Parkway. He's currently the coordinator for student discipline and alternative, excuse me, discipline services. He's very, very passionate about his work. If you haven't spoken with Michael, but most of you have and know who he is, he's a very passionate person about all kids. Something you might not know about Michael, he's a bit of a world traveler. Sometimes you've heard us talk about that, but most recently he went to Egypt and to Jordan, right? And then each year he goes somewhere pretty exciting, so we get to hear a little bit about that. And another thing you might not know about Michael, he has a tremendous sense of humor. He has a very, very tough job in Parkway, and it can kind of, you know, it can get you down if you're not careful. And Michael has a tremendous sense of humor. He gets our whole team laughing. Um, in a very positive way. And I believe that during my time as principal in Parkway, I had the maybe unfortunate reputation with Michael of being the one that called him on a Friday at five o'clock needing help. And he could have put that phone on silent, but he never did. He always picked up the phone and is willing to help support a school uh, in anything that they needed. So Michael will be able to carry this work moving forward in a much bigger capacity. And I'm very proud to introduce Michael Berlack. Um, thank you. Uh, this afternoon, uh, Gina gave me my uh, 20 year service award. Thank you for the green uh, pencil holder, I think is what it is. Um, but it made me reflect on uh, the 20 years I've served in Parkway as a social worker and my work in student discipline, um, always being reactive. Uh, and I'm super excited for the opportunity to really work on that front end, that proactive piece um, to get to a point where we don't need a coordinator of student discipline anymore, sorry. Greg. Um, so I, I pre I'm looking forward to the work and uh, I appreciate the support of our, our district as we move this work forward. So thank you. Thank you, Michael. So with that um, addition to our team, we also uh, needed to replace Michael and uh, continue the work of uh, coordinating discipline and our, our alternative discipline center. So under the direction of Michael, I would like to introduce Greg Wagner. Greg, would you come on up? So Greg Wagner, who is currently the um, high school, uh, Parkway North High School assistant principal, has been in Parkway a long time. He's been a high school teacher at Parkway North, now an administrator at Parkway North, and has had extensive work and experience with Michael and others um, working with student discipline and meeting the needs of our children. So one of the things that, um, when I was <clears throat> getting to know Greg a little bit better, um, what I learned about Greg was he has a very, which you really need in this position, but he has such a calm and collected and consistent demeanor, very thoughtful, very listens well, and when you least expect it, out comes a joke, like out of nowhere. So we knew he was perfect for the job. Um, during the interview though, in addition to that, something came out um, with Greg. He has a very big heart. And it's rare in an interview setting when you get to see someone's heart truly come out in the examples that he gave. And he gave an ex a very, very um, great story of his own family to the team. And I think people on the committee were even crying, I'm not sure. So we got to see his big heart come through. So his love of kids is very awesome. And additionally, he's a hard worker. He's working on his doctorate currently, and we look forward to having him um, all the dissertation to become Dr. Wagner very soon. Welcome, Greg. Uh, 
as, as Dr. Puccini mentioned, I've been in Parkway for 15 years. I've been at Parkway North for 15 years. I've been in education for um, 15 years. So it's all been in Parkway and I'm, I'm very proud of that. Um, as I started as an English teacher, um, I, I found out that while I do have a passion for teaching English, it quickly became a passion for helping students. So I, I looked for a capacity where I could kind of broaden what I was doing and that led me to an administration and it continued to be more and more about uh, serving and supporting students and their families, especially uh, students and families who may need a little bit more support than others. So when the opportunity came along uh, to move to the coordinator of discipline and specifically student services, uh, I was thrilled to take the opportunity. I am thrilled for this opportunity. I'm, I'm very much looking forward to working with Michael and Dr. Puccini and the uh, whole student services department and, and more importantly, continue uh, working, helping, supporting um, all the families of Parkway. Thank you. Next, I'd like to call on Dr. Chelsea Watson, Deputy Superintendent, to introduce several new buildings. Yes. Good evening, President Todd, Vice President Sorrentino, members of the board, Dr. Marty, Mrs. Stover. I have the pleasure of introducing four principals to you this evening, and we're going to start with Dr. Kevin Martin. Will you join me? Dr. Martin will be the principal of Northeast Middle School. He is currently the assistant principal at Hazelwood Northwest Middle School. Got to keep those two separate. And he has served in that role since 2015. We have the utmost confidence in his ability to join the Parkway leadership team due to his track record of excellence in leadership. In addition to his experience in administration, he brings roots in the roles of an instructional and data coach and a classroom teacher. His credentials include a doctorate in education, as well as an education specialist degree and master's degree from the University of Missouri St. Louis. He also holds a bachelor's in business teacher education from Illinois State University and is working to complete a graduate certificate in human resource management from Colorado State University. Feedback from those who participated in Dr. Martin's interview are as follows. He communicated a clear understanding of collaboration, developing and sustaining a healthy climate and culture, referring to students as scholars speaks to his inherent belief of each student's potential. He's motivating, energetic, and passionate about Northeast Middle School. He knows and understands the Parkway mission, and he's a people person with a strong ability to build a community. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Martin to the Parkway administrative team. Good evening. Um, appreciate the opportunity. Thank you, Dr. Watson, for the introduction. Very much excited to join the Parkway family and Northeast community. I've had about 10 to 12 days already I spent over there and very excited to get in the work. Already met with some parents for coffee already and got to meet with teachers. And so very excited to make Parkway a Northeast Middle School one of the premier schools that people come to and continue to grow and look at for the restorative practices and the character education and the excellence that it's doing. So I appreciate the opportunity and appreciate the support of all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Our principals from outside the district are learning quickly that once the Board of Education approves them, they start immediately. <laughs> they have both been doing double duty. Next, I'd like to introduce Dr. Krista Warner, our new principal of Wren Hollow Elementary School. Currently, Dr. Warner is serving in the Hazelwood School District as the Assistant Superintendent of Elementary Education. For six years prior to this role, students and staff benefited from her leadership as an elementary school principal. During her tenure as an elementary principal, she led her school to a National School of Character Education recognition. Prior to, prior to Hazelwood, Dr. Warner was an elementary assistant principal with the Melville School District. As an educator, she has twice been recognized for outstanding teaching, once in Hancock Place and the second time in Melville. In looking at Dr. Warner's track record, she has shown many skills as a problem solver and a team leader 
and an effective communicator. Some of the feedback from those involved in the interview process. One person said, she knows how to monitor achievement and how to keep staff and students accountable. She has proven leadership and proven relationship skills. She has a great deal of experience, perspective. She wants every, and that was underlined, student to have a chance to be a leader and believes in putting students first by monitoring achievement and getting students where they need it. One other comment said, the way she turned her previous school around is most impressive. She has the proven ability to increase a school's credibility. Dr. Warner holds a doctorate in educational leadership. Sorry. From St. Louis University and a master's degree in elementary education from Southeast, Southwest Baptist University and a Bachelor of Science from the University of Missouri St. Louis. We are pleased to have her join the administrative team here in Parkway as the principal of Bryn Hollow Elementary School. Welcome, Dr. Warner. Good evening and thank you for the opportunity for having me here this evening and for the opportunity to serve as the building leader of Wren Hollow Elementary School. I can't tell you how excited I am to get back into the school and work with students and teachers because that's truly where my heart is. I've loved this assistant superintendent gig for a while but it's just not where I feel that my heart is and my passion and being here this evening and celebrating all of the students here tonight was just really exciting and made me really realize that I made the right decision and I'm excited to be here um, with the Parkway community. So thank you very much. Next, I'd like to ask Dr. Aaron Wills to join me. Aaron is currently the principal of Claymont Elementary School. Dr. Wills is a familiar face in the Parkway community as he has been the elementary school principal of Claymont for 11 years. Students sometimes enjoy walking in in the morning and hearing Dr. Wills play the piano upon their arrival. For over a decade, he has proven his skills as a positive leader and has shown his commitment in developing relationships with students, families, and staff. Dr. Wills will be moving to Sorrento Springs Elementary School from the west area to the south area of the district where he has been selected to be the principal of Sorrento Springs. When listening to how one would describe Dr. Wills, one will often hear he is a natural leader. His communication style is very open. He is one of the finest elementary school principals in our district. Those who have worked with Dr. Wills rely on his keen sense of what it means to lead a community and count on him as a great resource given his pool of knowledge leading at the elementary level. Before joining Parkway, Aaron was an elementary principal in Union for five years and served as a classroom teacher for eight years. Dr. Will holds a doctorate in educational leadership from the University of Missouri, St. Louis and holds two degrees, one in elementary education, two master's degrees, elementary education and elementary administration. In addition, he has a bachelor's in business administration. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Wells to his new school, Sorrento Springs Elementary School. Thank you, Dr. Watson, and thank you for giving me this chance to try something new. And uh, mostly what I want to thank Parkway for, though, is um, giving me a chance 11 years ago to come here and go to get to go to Claymont and uh, just be a part of that community for, uh, for a long time, uh, where my heart really is. It truly is just an amazing chapter in my career to get to be with those people. Uh, I love Claymont with all of my heart. It's so hard to walk away from there. But I'm equally excited about going to Sorrento Springs and getting to build new relationships there with those uh, students and families and teachers and uh, get to try it again. So uh, thanks for the opportunity and I'm looking forward to continuing to serve Parkway. Thanks. I'm waiting to see the special handshake or the, the pass, the baton here. Next, I'd like to ask Michelle Weisenborn, the next principal of Claymont Elementary School, to join me. 
Since 2007, Michelle has been the assistant principal at Claymont Elementary School, and stepping into the principal role is a natural stepping stone as she knows and cares for the Claymont community. While at Claymont, she has made personal connections and has fostered the school culture to be very family-centered. We are fortunate that she joined us in 2000 where she taught fourth and fifth grade at Riverbend. While at Riverbend, Michelle earned the Teacher of the Year Award and the Leonard Blake Award, which is presented by the City of Chesterfield. Prior to Parkway, she was presented the District Level Outstanding Elementary Teaching Award while she was in Riverview Gardens. Ms. Weisenborn earned a Bachelor's of Science and Master's Degree in Education from the University of Missouri, St. Louis. She is a respected leader who will continue to lead students, families, sta and staff at Claymont. And I must tell you, the morning that I went to Claymont to share with the faculty that she was going to become the next principal of Claymont Elementary School, I felt like I was at a wedding reception because everyone was so excited and happy, clapping, and then there was a long receiving line as teachers piled out of the room to go to their classroom. Please join me in welcoming Ms. Weissenborn to her new role as Claymont Principal. Thank you very much. Um, I can't thank you enough for this opportunity. And as much as I'm gonna miss Aaron, my partner in crime, I am blessed to um, serve as the new principal at Claymont. That just doesn't sound right yet, but I'm gonna get there. So thank you so very much. And Claymont is truly my home. I love them all very much. Thank you. Thank you all very much. Uh, next on the agenda, 9.02, calendar of meetings. The annual board retreat will take place on June 1st, beginning at noon, and June 2nd, beginning at 8 a.m. at Parkway's Administrative Center. The next regular board meeting will take place on Wednesday, June 13th, 2018, beginning at 7 p.m. right here at Central Middle School. An anticipated closed session will be held at 6 p.m. Uh, next, we'll hear uh, board liaison reports. And we'll start down at the end. Uh, so this is my uh, first go at this, so hopefully I'll do a good job. Uh, in the last month, I've been trying to immerse myself in Parkway and uh, get a, a feeling for this job and this district and the, uh, the people in, that I'll be working with. Uh, the first uh, thing I attended was the West Middle School Leadership Day along with, uh, with Jeff, uh, which was a, a tremendous experience for me. It was nice to be in the school and to learn about the school, but particularly to learn about the school from uh, a group of middle school students that are very, very excited about their school and, and, uh, and wanted to share their enthusiasm with the, for their school with the community at large. They invited some uh, leaders from the community, and I'm honored to say that I was one of those leaders that was allowed to, that was invited to attend, and it was a great experience. The only Downside is as, as a thank you gift or a parting gift, they gave us all uh, t-shirts. When I got home, I realized that they had given me a size double XL t-shirt. Uh, apparently, that's what I look like to middle school students. <laughs> Uh, additionally, I took my son to two Parkway North High School baseball games, which was a great experience uh, for me to go back to my old high school and show it to my son. Uh, Parkway North went 2-0 and in those two games, so that was outstanding. Uh, and finally, last week, I attended the Parkway North High School Honors Night, which was a tremendous experience uh, for me in that, again, it was at my old high school, but also seeing the students that were honored at Parkway North High School, it really... Um, it wore my heart. You know, this district, uh, we talk about diversity and throughout the campaign, it was something we talked about a lot is creating opportunities for all of our students to su succeed. And to see the all of the students that are honored that night have accomplished such wonderful things and uh, from such different backgrounds, and uh, it was just a really great experience for me. And I think it's uh, a testament to the district and that school and the work that we're all doing. I will just mention the all district art show at Queenie Park a couple of weeks ago. Um, I am not a visual art person. I cannot draw a stick figure. So walking through and kind of seeing these amazing like sculptures and you know pieces by students was kind of mind boggling to me. Um, also petrifying because I had a four and a two year old with me and I was just 
something was going to break. Um, so we, <laughs> we found some real solace in the early childhood education, like separate room of the art show, um, where the teachers um, from our early childhood programs were actually there doing activities for kids. Um, so they got to do some cool stuff. They got their faces painted, which they were real excited about. Um, and Jeff Lackey pointed out to me that every single child in our early childhood education program had a piece at the show. So every single kid that's part of those programs, you know, could come and see their work hung beautifully and um, kind of juried. So it was it was really cool. So um, that was fun. And not we didn't break anything. So that was also good. <laughs> so don't feel bad about breaking anything. I was in my dining room the other day and my son's pottery is on display and one thing toppled over and toppled over and broke some of his pottery, and that was in my own house, so you're, you're off the hook. It's yours, though. <laughs> um, I had the pleasure of attending the Grand Team Dreams um, ceremony that uh, awarded a lot of the money we've heard about tonight of the Parkway uh, Alumni Association. I have to say, um, it was just such an honor to be there. Um, my son actually did receive an award, and it, so I, I got to see that whole process of fill, helping him to fill out the application urging him to get all the, the signatures that you have to get and part of it was also um, they also give scholarships for different music programs as well throughout the district so um, so that that was a benefit as well and just the the help that this is providing to families um, who want to uh, help encourage their students to take their uh, their learning a step further beyond what they do here at this inside the school building is just remarkable so um, I was very impressed it was this entire room here was filled and people were standing all along the the walls for for the ceremony so that just goes to show how many people actually took advantage of this and um, how many of the uh, awards were actually be able to make so it was such a pleasure to, to see that um, we've also been attending a lot of year-end music performances, and uh, you know, I just see the activity going on with our students right now. You know, they're they're studying for final exams. They're they're doing their end of the year music performances. They're going to their um, end of the year sports tournaments. Uh, it's a very busy time, and teachers are trying to keep up, and you know, grades are trying to get entered and graded, and so it's just a crazy time right now trying to keep up with schedules. So. We just really need to, you know, extend our, our arms to everybody right now with every hard work that's being done in the district. Um, I also had the pleasure of attending the Ross Elementary School's community breakfast last Friday. That was quite an honor. Um, it was fun to see the young students there um, singing and performing for us and then getting an opportunity to have breakfast with some of the first responders that served the, the Creve Court area and um, talking with them and some of the other community volunteers that serve that area. Um, and so it was just a, a beautiful morning to spend at, at Ross Elementary. And I, I was, I was um, warmed by watching uh, a, a volunteer, a, a gentleman who was a volunteer at the school helping the little elementary kids put the flag up and so he was teaching them how to put the flag up, and they were lo looking, and one little guy saluted the flag, and it was just really cute. So it was just a wonderful opportunity to be um, at, at a different elementary school. So I'll just share, um, a few hours ago, I got a student-led tour of the Southwest Middle School Garden outside, and it was fun to have the kids outside, a diverse group of kids, in nature and using their education in nature, learning from nature, and I'm a big proponent of getting our kids outside more, unplugging them, getting them off their screens. So it was fun to see that. And then learning today, I did not realize this, of the produce that they have, 70% of it goes to Circle of Concern. So that was very much, I enjoyed it very much and hope to see more of that in other Parkway schools too. Uh, it's been a pleasure for me to uh, continue to serve after many years on the uh, Parkway, Project Parkway Steering Committee. Uh, it's just amazing what the steering committee has done to guide the district in terms of the three major goals related to students, resources, and personnel. Uh, also attended the uh, Project Parkway evening sessions, and uh, it's really gratifying to see so many citizens attend those meetings and really get involved in providing input so 
congratulations to Dr. Watson, who has led the Project Parkway this year. And uh, we know that the good work of Project Parkway will continue as uh, we achieve so many of the objectives that are really important to the success of our students and the success of the district. Thank you, Sam. Uh, are we back on? One, two, check, check, check. So I'll, we, won't, we won't vote on anything yet since we're not being recorded, but I'll share uh, a few things that I've done in the last few weeks. Um, attended the, the Kiwanis prayer breakfast with Dr. Marty and a few others, uh, some of whom are here in the room, and it was a great morning to get together with uh, lots of community leaders in, in Chesterfield and the surrounding area and, and uh, be uplifted by some, some various speakers that we had, and, um, and it was just a great event. Um, also, uh, also attended the Ross breakfast with, uh, with Debbie and also Sudhir, who couldn't be here tonight. Um, and uh, I agree, it was a, a great uh, community event. Uh, there were some volunteers in the room. I know you, you sat with a few. Uh, and so it was good to, to kind of rub elbows with some of those folks. Uh, also uh, spent a little bit of time at the Oasis. I didn't do that. Uh, now we're on. Uh, spent some time at the Oasis luncheon, uh, visiting with some of those folks and recognizing the work that they do in our schools. Um, it's always great to, to uh, recognize uh, the, uh, the people that are involved in that program, and, and it's uh, certainly a vital one in our district. Uh, what else? I, I attended uh, South High Symphonic Band concert last week and, and uh, was really impressed at at what has uh, tra been transformed in the last year under under uh, the new leadership there, um, so that was that was great. And um, I, I, I'm not I'm not making a citizen statement, but I but I would like to shout out to uh, to recognize our teachers and our nurses and in, in uh, teachers and nurses uh, appreciation week. Um, so they all do uh, obviously a tremendous amount of great work in our schools and. Uh, we're all very appreciative of them. So, next. I, I would just like to, uh, by, by the way, board, thank you so much for all your support. Uh, you, you don't realize how much it's appreciated, uh, your presence at activities and events. Uh, so thanks so much for all your reports. Uh, I did want to just uh, mention a couple of uh, real neat honors for Parkway. Uh, Parkway has been uh, selected as one of America's best mid-sized employers for 2018 by Forbes magazine. And Mr. Tandy's trying to figure out the root of that uh, <laughs> award, but uh, we're very excited to be named. Uh, actually, um, uh, one of America's best employers uh, in, in, in not only the country, but uh, certainly like the second or third best employer in Missouri. So we're very excited about that. And then to shout out to, um, <clears throat> to the, our communication department, and we will we'll have probably more information about this, but last week they were notified of, of receiving a gold medallion award for their work on in so many areas, but specifically the Parkway CARES employee and, and uh, mission work that they've done over the last year. So congratulations, Paul, you know, Annie Dickerson, Derek, uh, Kathy, the whole department, James, that have done such a great job in our communications uh, in Parkway. And thank you, board, for continuing to support uh, uh, all that work and our employees. And like Jeff said, uh, um, we uh, got a lot of community support for teachers and nurses this week from McDonald's and uh, uh, car washes and all kinds of uh, good things. And I know our PTOs are having many activities in our schools, so uh, it's great to honor our, our educators. And Jeff and I were able to put out a little note to both our nurses and our, our teachers in recognition of their work. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, let's see, the next Project Parkway quarterly meeting, uh, the most recent one was held Monday, April 16th at South High. PLA board subcommittee meeting was held Wednesday, April 25th at the Instructional Services Center. Those were both the last meetings for the year on those. Upcoming subcommittee meetings, there are none. 10.0, uh, action items. We have 60 uh, consent action items, which I will not read. Uh, <clears throat> may I have a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented in the May 9th, 2018 board materials? 
Is there anything to be pulled to action or closed? Okay, uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries 6-0. 11.0, approval of high school English language arts curriculum. May I have Dr. Chelsea Watson join us. Is this karaoke passing the mic? Good evening again. This evening you are going to hear about the 912 ELA curriculum framework. Mrs. Crowley has been working with a team since October of 2016. This work is based on House Bill 1490, which provided new guidance to DESE in regards to our Missouri learning standards. As you recall last month, you heard about science. So please welcome Erin, our secondary language, language arts coordinator. Mouth yeah. yeah. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. So as Dr. Watson said, I'm here to introduce the proposed high school English language arts curriculum framework. Um, it was, as she also said, um, because of House Bill 1490 that we are looking at it again. The last time it was updated was 2014. This was a revision from our last um, approval from the program evaluation that happened in May of 2011. Just a little bit of history, because I know a lot of you are new here. That was actually before my time too. Um, K-8 ELA presented last spring. And while we have the same guiding principles for K-12 English language arts, the high school team really wanted to take an additional year to fully flesh out their thinking um, and make sure that the curriculum was the high quality that we come to expect in Parkway. Up to this point, our curriculum um, guaranteed a number of whole class anchor and satellite texts to be taught each year, a number of writing pieces that students would complete each year, a number of writing products in the modes of argumentation, information, and narrative that would be given feedback over a two-year span. List of vocabulary terms to cover each year and alignment to our previous Missouri Learning Standards. So that's what we had before. The new curriculum framework establishes guaranteed experience at each grade level in the study of literature, literary genres, reading across text through a thematic focus, it engages students in authentic speaking and listening. It engages students with authentic writing products that actually blend the elements of argument, narrative, and informational writing modes as appropriate to audience and purpose across four different areas, creative writing, academic writing, research, and digital composition. And it is aligned to our current Missouri learning standards, or the, the ones that were adopted in 2016. The new curriculum framework also ensures that students continue to grow as readers, writers, thinkers, and listeners each year through some recursive progressions that were in the information that you received. Um, we consider these fundamental skills that have no ceiling. So as were our content that I mentioned about the reading literature and speaking listening, writing products have some level of mastery, just as readers and writers and speakers and listeners, we want our kids to, no matter where they start, always grow every year because those things do not have a ceiling for them to meet. Um, so at this time, I'm just happy to answer any questions you have from looking over the curriculum that we presented to you. Thank you, because I had asked a format <coughs> for the review that shows what's mm -hmm. actually being changed. And so I greatly appreciate you all taking the time to produce that for us to show us specifically what the revisions are that are being made. So thank you for that. You're welcome. Yeah. We're very excited about the work. So the, the one, I guess the one thing I want to maybe focus a little bit more on is um, the idea of public speaking and mm -hmm. the oral presentations that are being done, and is that being ramped up, would you say, in the way that this is being done here? Because that is so important, and I know yeah. that it's a stressor for our high school students to do oral presentations, and they get very stressed out about it, but it's so important, and so I'm just wondering 
how that, you know, are, is, are we focusing on that and how much, and um, is that being, you know, <laughs> spread throughout grades 9 through 12? With Absolutely. The, with the so it is being spread out through grades 9 through 12. We actually have um, five different experiences that we've kept a little bit generic that would happen at each grade level. And let me look at my notes to make sure I don't miss out, mess up what those are, that they will participate in and get feedback on class discussions, read alouds, informal sharing, formal presentations, and then something that incorporates multimedia into their presentations. That's coupled with um, a skill-based rubric that the students will be working on that is a combination from the Missouri Learning Standards and actually the Parkway Character Education Standards, because a lot of the Parkway Character Education Standards, which I know you're familiar with, really have some of those key things about being a good speaker and a presenter and a listener and having confidence in what we do, so it kind of ties back to mission as well. We left it vague because we want our teacher teams, our CLTs, or our professional learning communities at each grade level in each school to decide what is the best way for the students based on the other things going on in class for them to incorporate that. So what will the formal presentation be will be up to the teams that they're required to have it happen every year as part of the framework. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anyone have any further questions? Okay. Can I, can I just, yeah. I, I really, uh, and Kevin uh, has been really kind of, I think, uh, as we work with Aaron, you know, one of the things that uh, uh, that, that was stated uh, so well is that we, we've gotten rid of the idea that there's a certain ceiling. I, I, I just like the way Aaron said that because mm -hmm. one of the things we hear is our, our students go off to college and uh, we think our kids are really well prepared, but uh, they have whole new experiences and the world is changing so fast. And the, the thing that there's, you know, you may be an outstanding writer and speaker, but but at each grade level, there's, there's you could go further. So right. I, I like that and, and also it kind of ties in with our personalized learning thing that, you know, we're not, we're not just interested in getting students at a certain point, we want students to, to keep exploring. So I, I think that's most refreshing in this work that uh, Aaron brought before us tonight. Thank you. Uh, the teacher team that I worked with really were the drivers of this. I feel like I was just blessed to work with them. And every time we brought it back to all of our teachers over the past two years, just the refining process and all their ideas and their commitment to students, just I wish you guys could have seen the aha moment where they're like, yes, this is why I became a teacher and this is what we're getting back to the heart of ELA again. Um, and tying to all the things that Parkway is just becoming so well known for and what we're proud of and the ceiling when you go into professional worlds, you don't stop learning. And so that our, we want to instill that in our students early and often, that you will continue to be a learner your whole life. So. Mm -hmm. the request that I had was a list of the different materials that are used. Yes. And I, I will just say publicly that, you know, there have been parents concerned about some of the literature mm -hmm. that's used in the classrooms. And I have to say that whenever there are enough parents that raise concerns, the teachers have been very good about um, making alterations to what yeah. the books are that are used in the classroom. So um, we greatly appreciate that because, you know, some kids are just not ready for some subjects that yeah. are being um, introduced even in high school. So I, I think we still want to be uh, considerate of our community and our families mm -hmm. in the topics of um, discussion that's taking place openly in the classroom, the kinds of um, subject matter that they're using in their ELA curriculum. Thank you for saying that. Our teachers really appreciate hearing that. I know they work really hard to make sure every kid is connected to the curriculum, that they mm -hmm. feel comfortable and safe in their classrooms. Right. And um, it's a testament that very few issues ever come to me, that mm -hmm. they are handling it well on their own. But you will probably see in here that we do have a push to have our kids choose their readings more mm -hmm. as a balance to kind of looking at the canon and classic literature as well. So I think that's helping. Thank you. You're welcome. I do think the next item might be mine too. So do you want me to stand up here? It is. Okay. <laughs> Uh, okay, may I have a motion and a second that the Board of Education approve the English Language Arts Curriculum revisions for grades 9 through 12 as presented in the May 9, 2018 board meeting. Second. Roll call, Nikki. Ms. Davis? Yes. Yeah. Mrs. Hopper? Yes. Yeah. Mr. Schindler? Yes. Yeah. Dr. Ciotino? Yes. Yeah. Mr. Seltzer? Yeah. Mr. Tarn? Yes. Motion carries 6-0. Next, 11.02, approval of purchase of high school English language arts resources. So, same topic. Anyone have any questions about the funding for the curriculum? No. Okay, you're off okay. the hook. All right, all right. Thank you very much. Have a good evening. You too.
May I have a motion and a second that the Board of Education approve the purchase of high school English language arts materials not to exceed the amount of $23,529.95 to be paid from teaching, learning, and accountability divisions, high school textbook matrix funds. Roll call, Mickey. Ms. Davis. Yes. Mrs. Hopper. Mr. Schindler. Yes. Dr. Ciertino. Yes. Mr. Seltzer. Yes. Mr. Todd. Yes. Motion carries 6 0. Policy review. Anyone here? Yeah, because we, we're not voting on policy review. We, we're just reviewing policy review. So we have uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 policies that were presented in board materials. Does anyone have any questions for any of the people responsible for revisions of those policies at this time? I have a general question. Have any of these been reviewed yet by legal counsel? And do they need to have legal counsel review? Patty knows the answer. I can respond to that. Um, good evening. Uh, MSBA has reviewed, I know, the construction one, the ones dealing with uh, workers' comp and the drug policies in the student transportation, and I believe also the suicide prevention. Yes, yes, they have all been thoroughly reviewed. So some of them are coming to you, um, specifically the workers' comp, the um, construction, uh, purchasing, et cetera, um, because we knew we needed to make reser uh, revisions to it, and we took them to uh, MSBA specifically in order to get their version of the policy so that we could have that in place by July 1st. Okay. Any other questions? And I think you've explained this to me before, so I apologize. Um, just on the non-discrimination, why um, sexual orientation isn't specifically named as one of the So categories? I'm gonna call up Dr. Pacini. She may be able to respond to that better than I. I appreciate it, thank you. Yeah. Um, so that's an actual, it's taken actually from the new um, laws that have come out. So okay. what, what's on our what's on our website is new. It's literally cut and pasted on the requirements. But it, we do protect students. Or I'm sorry, everyone. Absolutely. <laughs> on that basis. So it's not that that's not something that we protect based on. It's just mm -hmm. it, it's covered under sex. Am it's, I right? Uh -huh. There, it's covered under sex, mm -hmm. which I don't understand. But yeah, so long as it's covered. Thank you. You're welcome. Or it might, I, I was wondering about that too, but I was wondering if it was covered as an other characteristic protected by law, and if that would cover that there. But my, right. my other question about that right. is under the harassment piece. So the title of this policy just says non-discrimination, mm -hmm. but then it talks about harassment. Okay. So I was wondering if we should include harassment in the title of this policy. So if someone's looking that up, wonder if we have some kind of a harassment policy, they may not find it, if it's not deliberately in that title. Okay. I can look into that. Okay. And is this based on MSBA standards as well? It, it is. didn't have that footer on note on mm -hmm. that. It is. Okay. Um, it is taken exactly from that, so we just cut it right out of there and pasted it in. Okay. Thank you. No further questions. These policies oh, will I'm be. Oh, sorry. I had some more questions. Not on this one, oh. but on another one. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Um, <clears throat> on the suicide awareness and prevention, is this is this intended to be at school, on school property, or is this? It didn't really address that very well, and it. The way I was reading it, it could be interpreted to even mean, you know, because when you're trying to find a, if a student is located, I mean, maybe they're located at their home, um, at a grocery store, you know, so I'm just trying to understand what the intent is of this, if it's intended just to be applicable to school property or anywhere. Okay, I'm gonna let Erin help us with that. So part of the 
policy ties it to we have to have an evidence-based response protocol. Within that piece, we have a piece for counselors, nurses, social workers who are gonna be the people who are gonna use that screening tool. Um, and potentially administrators if they would like to get trained, they have the option. Um, in that piece, it addresses what to do if a student is at school that you're worried about, there's a flow chart, and then also a flow chart of what to do when the student's not at school, but you are worried about them. So oftentimes we'll have our professionals get a student come in and say, you know, my friend just posted something on social media, they're not here, they're by themselves at home, mm -hmm. please help. Mm -hmm. um, so we have a protocol to pr respond to that as well. Okay, okay, all right. And Erin, your timeline includes training of staff before the beginning of next school year? Um, that timeline, so we worked with our administrators and HR as well to give the administrators, they've had a lot thrown at them that they have to train their staff with. Um, so we've said actually um, September is Suicide Awareness Month, so we decided by the end of September would work. Um, so that way they can use the pre-service days before school starts or they could use a staff meeting in the month of September if they'd like. It's a little flexibility for them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, if there's no other questions, these okay, I'm sorry, one more question, no. not on this one. <laughs> <laughs> um, on student transportation, I saw that it does address, it, it talks about mm, eligible students and it, and it does end up addressing transition because I was thinking it didn't do that, but it does talk about homeless students. Um, but does VIC need to be included in here or non-resident students that only no, they would have their own policy because okay. the transportation of our students that live in the city of St. Louis is all provided by VIC. Mm -hmm. um, so this is essentially for our Parkway resident students. And then okay. if it's um, our students that are at sporting events and coaches drive them, mm -hmm. you know, that's, that's where they are covered in here. Okay, yeah, I saw that in there. Okay, thanks. Are there any other questions for any of the other policies? <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay. All right. All right. No other much. questions. Policies will be up for approval at the next regular board meeting in June. 13.0 reports. We have none. 14.0. Patty, don't go far. Bond issue planning work session. We'll, have, we'll hear from Patty and Mr. Paul Tandy. <coughs> Good evening again, and uh, we're, yeah, Patty and I are pleased to be here tonight because we've been talking about this for so long, and uh, so we're pleased to be here to present an initial review of a proposal for a no tax increase bond issue for November of 2018, and um, before we get into the proposal, I want to do a little bit on the kind of a background and reminder of kind of how we got here. Is it on? Huh. There we go. So as a reminder, we have a long range facility um, facilities plan. It l usually looks about 10 years ahead. Uh, we do have for each um, school building what's called a facility condition index, which uh, lines out all the major systems in each school building and its condition, and then it helps us anticipate when each of those major systems are going to need to be repaired or replaced. Um, we've been doing this for a long time now. Uh, the, uh, the, the phase one of the current 10-year plan was is gonna be completed this summer um, as the final projects of the 2014 bond issue are completed. So we will then, in this proposal, it's essentially taking phase two of the current 10-year plan, and this would be a no tax increase in September 2014. Um, so this would be to complete the 10 year plan. And we've spent about 18 months now gathering feedback from not only um, principals and uh, parents, but also the broader community. Can you still hear me? Um, interestingly, in the surveys, 
uh, in years past, we've had trouble, uh, the community didn't quite understand our buildings were getting old, but in recent surveys, we've seen that they're starting to get it, and I think it's because they are getting really old. I mean, the average school's about 50 years old now, and uh, I thought it's just sort of an interesting little statistic there. Of our 28 traditional K-12 schools, only two of them are less than 30 years old. Majority are actually over 50 and 79. Most of our buildings are probably in 60, 69, 68, 69, 70. Those are the major. Also hard for me to see, but basically it's in your packet. This graphic shows history of the bond issues over the last 30 years or so, and what you can see is you know 93, 99, 04, 08, 14, and then we're looking at 18. So about every four to six years, over the last 30 years. Um, We've had a facility-related bond proposal, and fortunately, our community has been very, very supportive of this work. So this bond proposal, if you decide to put it on the ballot, if it passes, then it would, the project would take us through uh, 2022. In this, in this uh, planning process, we did something a little different. A lot of you may recall we did something called thought exchange. It's a different way to do a survey. And, and the thought exchange process allows you to share comments online to open-ended questions, and then participants can see those comments of other people and then assign stars to those comments to the ones they think are the most important. It's a little different than a traditional survey where you just provide your input and you don't really ever, hardly ever get to see the specific comments of other people. We had great uh, engagement on this. We had almost 5,400 people participate. Uh, normally on a survey, even if it's a very hot topic like uh, the school calendar, uh, we can only get maybe 3,000 people to participate. So this, these are really good numbers. Uh, I think it's because it's a different type of process and it didn't require, you know, a good number of people did not share their own thoughts, but they liked going in and be able to see the thoughts of other people and then star starring and giving feedback on the comments of others. Um, so I was really pleased with that level of, of input. And we tried to revise the proposal over time based on the feedback we were getting through various sources, but including Thought Exchange. The top themes we got from Thought Exchange number one regarding facilities, number one, overcrowding in school capacity, primarily at the schools you see shown. Um, Riverbend and West Middle, we're continuing to watch, and uh, we are, we do have measures on the proposal to address McKelvey. The second theme was maintenance, repair, renovation. Interestingly, that was number two. You know, it's not very exciting, but people get it. Uh, the third was walls, and specifically to close the open pods at those three elementary schools, which are being addressed in the proposal. Parking and parking lots, um, and that's primarily, um, you know, improving the s safety and the, the sort of the, the drive-through areas in our schools, and we continue to work on those. The new one we had that popped up was restrooms. We've talked about that. That was not on our radar, but it came up very, very strongly that we need to get a better plan on addressing our restrooms. Um, if you've been in the ones here, no offense to Dr. Bogus, but they could use a, an upgrade. So we are allocating, uh, I think it's about 2.2 .2 million on this proposal, and then I know the facilities team is also adding money into their operating budget to try to continue to address that. And then finally, the, uh, the sixth of the top themes was safety and security. And we did have a number of, and do have a number of proposals, or um, um, projects on the proposal for safety and security. But then in uh, Thought Exchange number two, which occurred in February, not too long after the shooting in Florida, we asked, we provided everyone with a revised list of the projects and basically asked for your feedback on the, the revised list. You know, are we getting closer? And uh, safety and security was the number one theme. So not necessarily surprising because of the timing of the survey when it went out. But what was good about the thought exchange was we were able to drill down a little bit more deeply and find out what specifically are the areas of greatest concern in safety and security. And you can see what those were. It was primarily front office, school front entrance security and visitor management was number one. Uh, the double entry vestibule uh, concept, they liked it, but they didn't like that we were only planning to do it at the high schools. They felt strongly if you're gonna do it, if it's that important, you need to do it everywhere. 
and uh, we have revised the proposal to do that. And then closing the open pods completely. Initially, the plan was that those three elementary schools, the walls would just be heightened, but not go all the way to the ceiling. They didn't like that. They wanted it to go all the way to the ceiling and, and make it right for safety and security. And so we did revise the proposal based on that. So that's safety and security. The second area, again, was maintenance and repair. That was similar to the first uh, thought exchange. Overcrowding, that was the same. And then the other area that popped up that we knew about but came up very strongly in the second one was early childhood and the need to add classroom space, particularly in the south area. This slide shows you just uh, in a <coughs> summary of what the changes we made based on safety and security. Uh, if you can see what's in black on the slide is what was in the earlier proposal, then the red is what we added. I'll quickly go through it. So we're adding the vestibules at all schools, high school, middle, and elementary. We were gonna fund the elementary vestibules out of operating funds. So it's just the middle and high that would be in the bond proposal. Uh, we already had the additional security cameras in the elementary schools on the proposal. Again, extending the walls all the way to the ceiling at those three elementaries. Uh, the classroom door lock sets, that was uh, already on the proposal. That basically completes the uh, change out of all of our door lock sets in the buildings. The 2014 bond issue addressed classrooms. This one is address addressing all the other uh, rooms within the, the schools. Um, we heard very clearly safety film that we, um, there were concerns that we needed to do more of that. In the 2014 bond issue, we just put it on the main doorway entries, but we had secondary entrances, secondary entrances and other areas where we needed to add safety film. <coughs> and then finally, an enhanced visitor management system at the front office of uh, schools. Uh, that, but that project, again, like the elementary uh, vestibules, that'll be funded through operating. So that's happening. Uh, in fact, you approved, uh, you approved that tonight, and we'll begin rolling that out in the fall. It'll take us a while to get to all the schools on that, but that'll be a, a culture shift in our schools, and will require some education and training. We'll need to be communicating with our parents so they'll understand, um, you know, sort of the new rules and the reasons why, and to take some of the burden off those front office folks that are going to be asking folks for their driver's licenses when they come in for the first time. Um, that'll, be a, that'll be a shift. And I'll turn it over to Patty. We did have to, in order to fund those safety and security additional enhancements, we had to make some cuts to the, to the proposal, and uh, Patty's going to walk you through that. Excellent. Thank, thank you, Paul. Um, so as you see, the list here is a list of some of the paving projects that have been placed on hold. So the total cost of all of these is just over 5.7 million. Um, all the locations are listed here. Um, in order to choose pavement to make the reduction, First, it was part of the suggested, um, I guess, low-hanging fruit, if you will, from the thought exchange and the, the parent feedback. Some of the other items ranked much higher in importance. Also, when we look at our learning environment, the pavement has the least impact on the education of our students. So having the students at the center of everything that we do, pavement was the decision that um, could be made on that. Um, where are you going? Okay, so when we look at then the breakdown of our full project listing, uh, maintenance and repairs makes up a total of 56%, so 61 million of the $110 million. Safety, security, and health related um, is 10% or $11 million. Technology, 7% or $8 million. And renovations and additions in, is 27% or $30 million. When we put that all together, our final project list um, in categories, as, as Scott Bennett has summarized, is included in this slide. So we have, you know, the total of 109,990,090. I'm pretty sure we'll spend the additional $910 as well. Um, so we knew that um, our target was $110 million based on our financial projections with our assessed valuation and our tax rate. So keeping it within the 110 million keeps us still with the projected no tax increase. And then I'm gonna turn it back to Paul. And just, <clears throat> excuse me, real briefly on that. Uh, 
I know this slide is impossible to see, but um, in the maintenance and repair areas, we still have, I think it's about $11 million in there for pavement. So even though we cut a lot out, we had a lot in there to begin with. So we're still doing a lot of pavement projects, uh, obviously not as much as we initially planned, but there's still a lot in there for that. And then on the renovations and repairs, as a reminder, uh, that's a lar the biggest chunk probably is the North High continuation of the master plan for North High School. And then uh, the McKelvey, uh, the switch out of Instructional Services Center to be a K-1 center for McKelvey and then adding on at South Middle to accommodate the adult serving students uh, through student services and so forth. So that in the, renovations. in renovations, right, sorry. Um, those, are, those are just some of the larger projects that I we didn't really mention. On technology, there's roughly eight million and again, four million is for classroom instruction um, up upgrades. The, our smart boards are, by the time we get to this, I don't know how old they'll be, Jason, but pretty old. And we're looking at replacing that sort of technology and also we have four million in there to replace our old analog telephone system throughout the entire school district with voice over IP, with voice over IP thank you we could use a new soundboard for the board meetings <laughs> uh, and finally we did do a, a community-wide opinion survey because so much of the, the feedback we get is from parents and staff and it's hard to get just the average community member to come to a town hall meeting on bonds on facility improvements so we do a, did do a survey to, sit to determine the or gauge the degree to which the uh, proposal resonated with the community. Uh, we you had a presentation on that last month, so I really won't go into it, but it uh, we found them to be, be very accurate over the years. <coughs> very strong feedback. You can see 86% um, 80, of the respondents gave Parkway an A or a B grade overall. Uh, that's excellent compared to about 44% statewide on the statewide average. So very strong support within the community. We've always had that. Very supportive. When you ask uh, the community members about the support for a $110 million bond proposal, not saying whether it was a no tax or, or tax at all, didn't mention that. Uh, <coughs> you can see the responses there, and there's the math, 69.2%. Again, margin of error about 4.4. Um, in Missouri, you need 57% to pass a bond, so we have cautiously optimistic on that. At the end of the survey, we did ask, or did remind them it would be a no tax, and we asked the question again, and the numbers went up to about 75. So again, very, very optimistic of the support for our community. Uh, we know that the volunteer committee that is ready to go if you decide to pull the trigger on it. Uh, they're ready to go and they're excited about putting together a campaign. Alrighty, so some of the information that was also delivered at the last Project Parkway meeting. Uh, so just a reminder, if you didn't hear it the three other times we said it, it's a no tax increase bond issue uh, proposal that we're um, looking toward. Um, in this past fall, we actually refinanced, refunded some of our outstanding general obligation bonds, and we paid some bonds off early. So the net present value savings to our debt service fund was a total of 4.3 million over time um, and it just so happened that we were able to do that prior to the tax reform that um, actually would not allow that um, under our circumstances in the future years so we had perfect timing in that um, when we look at how much is actually available for us to um, even uh, borrow with increasing our tax rate that's based on a state statute and a calculation with our bonding capacity and our bonding capacity would be set at 15% so as you can see we're well below our legal debt margin as well when we compare ourselves to our neighboring school districts in st. Louis County we are the third lowest tax rate on our debt service levy so this slide is only debt service levies for st louis county school districts um, the lowest is 30 cents in ferguson florissant the highest is normandy school district at 1.7825 and the average of all these districts is 8216 so 8216 per 100 of assessed valuation. So certainly um, we are uh, definitely uh, well below the average in comparison. So um, with all of that, we took um, our projected bond proposal. We went to our lead bond legal counsel, which is Jason Terry with the Mornbell, and he has set up proposed uh, ballot language. 
This includes all of the projects, gives broad language that would include other things just in case we need to add them in an emergency um, with our, our bond projects as we're going along. Um, and um, so far this has been what has been reviewed and some of this is statutory language such as that last sentence um, that's added in. It seems redundant but it is required to be in there. We do know that the ballot um, from St. Louis County in November is expected to be a rather long ballot. We've, uh, Nikki received some feedback from there. Um, they did um, give us an initial warning that they may limit us to 50 words, but Jason Terry said that they have not done that in the past for bond ballot initiatives. Any questions? We welcome all your feedback. Anyone? We also have our experts, Scott and Mike here, in case there's additional questions as well. Well, I, I'll just say thank you for all the work that you put into this and for talking also about what had to be pulled out in order to make the accommodations to add the security feature so that we can see, you know, what are we not going to do or put on, find another way. I think in conversations Mike and I have had, we'll find another way to do that if, if it becomes a, a safety issue because we mm -hmm. certainly don't want our pavement and sidewalks to be of safety concerns to um, our community. So if that becomes an issue, we'll find a way to make that, that happen. But um, I think the safety things that we need to put in here are most important for our students. And, our and I know when Mike and I have spoke about this in the past also is um, we have a crew that works on our grounds and they can have a little bit more of a focus on filling in some of our cracks and our potholes as well in order to make some of these properties um, last that extra year or so before we actually have funding with that following bond issue in order to um, meet these needs. Thank you. I will just say that um, if, if the board has questions, uh, at the, we, we put an item on our board retreat uh, to have further discussion. Mm -hmm. So between now and, and um, certainly end of the month, early June, we'll have a, an opportunity before it comes to you for the actual approval in June. And, and I'll just, Echo Debbie's comments that the uh, the work that you all and, and everybody has put into this thus far has been amazing, and the communication that we've had has been great because I think that's evidence of why we don't have any questions is they've already been answered throughout the last several months in in different uh, meetings that we've heard a lot of this information. So thank you all very much. Thank you, and a lot of that has been Scott and his team. Yep. Uh, most school districts have to hire an outside architect and engineering firm even to put this type of a plan together, and it's actually his team that do the yeoman's work of all of this, so um, that is exceptional and very time consuming for them, so they do a great job with that. Yes, they do. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, 15.0, uh, call for special meeting, there is none. 16.0, the next scheduled closed session. Next anticipated closed session will be held Wednesday, June 13th at 6 p.m. at Parkway Central Middle School. Details of the closed session will be posted within 24 hours of the anticipated meeting. There are no closed sessions. Uh, may I have a motion and a second to adjourn the regular meeting? All in favor? Any opposed? No. Motion carries 6-0.